bubbly you sip on at New Year's, that glass of vino you have with dinner. Uh, magnificent. Making it is an incredibly scientific and precise process, dependent on things like soil, rainfall, and temperature. Wine producers in vineyards like these have been relying on those variables remaining fairly consistent for hundreds, sometimes thousands of years, and have been honing their products for just as long. I'm here with Sharon, the owner of Barrel Oak Winery. And Sharon, can you tell me a little bit how the environment affects your product? The environment is everything in the product. I mean, the, that's the fabulous thing about wine. It really is an expression of terroir, of the environment in which the grapes were grown. Warmer climates are gonna give you more sugars, therefore really higher alcohol levels and more fruity. Colder climate wines tend to be more acidity, a little more minerally. And how has it been the past few years? Have you seen any extreme weather? We have seen a lot of extreme weather. We're getting hot, hot days in the middle of the winter and cold days in the middle of the summer. And that, for the grapevines, they start to wake up and they start thinking, gosh, is it, is it time? That's scary. If they do bud out, then get cold again and you can have a serious frost event and that'll ruin a whole crop. We don't want to burst your bubble, or your bubbly as it were, but climate change is really throwing a black fly in your Chardonnay. Some studies predict that at the rate carbon emissions are going, land suitable for growing wine grapes could decrease anywhere from 19 to 62 percent by 2050. And if carbon emissions increase, that number could go up to 73 percent. On the flip side, geographical regions that wine connoisseurs would have turned their noses up at just a few years ago are now becoming more hospitable to grape growing. An agricultural frontier is where agriculture, crop growing goes into places where there hasn't been any food grown before. Lots of wine production is headed north, to places that used to be too cold to grow grapes. So what's the problem with getting your wine from places like Canada or Russia? The amount of carbon that's in these northern soils is really kind of mind-boggling. Those soils contain the equivalent of one billion cars worth of carbon. So as the ground is plowed, all of that CO2 is released into our atmosphere, continuing the vicious cycle of climate change. Anyone need a drink after hearing that? Well, there's one thing you can do. You can drink sustainable wine. It's good. For official designation as sustainable, wineries have to demonstrate a commitment to things like water conservation, renewable energy, and earth-friendly pest management. And here's something worth toasting to. In a study of thousands of wines, those made with organic grapes rather than conventional methods got higher ratings from experts. Being so sensitive, wine grapes are an excellent indicator crop, providing insight into how climate change can affect other agriculture. And we all need to eat, so whether you're a regular wine drinker, or just indulge in Manischewitz at Passover, or you pass over wine altogether, I hate beer and wine and any kind of liquor, you should be paying attention. 